Live from Case at 12, the night beat starts right now. Rain showers, downpours in some areas sweeping through parts of San Antonio for a second day in a row. We'll check in with meteorologist Adam Kasky with what to expect for the rest of the week. And more money is moving when it comes to home buying. What a realtor says you may want to consider coming up. But first. Is school set to start up as the Delta variant ramps up? Teachers with Northside Independent School District fear a possible wave within the classroom could be on the horizon. Those who are vaccinated are protected, but not entirely immune. Symptoms and breakthrough cases among vaccinated kids and adults have been mild. Those younger than 12, though, are still not eligible to get the vaccine. The night team's Jaffney Gray with what Northside ISD students can expect for the new school year. It's, it's a big concern for us. No. Nah. No. Oh, yeah, I'm concerned. With the school year right around the corner, parents are weighing in on their level of concern when it comes to the rise in COVID cases and the Delta variant. We're for sure going to be masking up. Even 10-year-old Mariah McCoy here plans to take precaution. I wanted to be prepared like with masks and gloves and wipes to wipe down my desk. President of the Northside ISD Teachers Union Wanda Longoria says there is major concerns among their members, especially not knowing much about the Delta variant. Ultimately, teachers want to be able to be safe, to know they're safe, to know there are layers of mitigation in the district that are going to protect them. Mitigation that includes smaller class sizes and updating our filtration system at the very least. Barry Perez with the district says it plans to implement last year's protocols of sanitation stations, PPE, and the use of plexiglass. He says while they will continue to look into ways of enhancing a filtration system, smaller class sizes may be a reach. That becomes a logistics problem for us, and, and it's not something that in many cases is realistic. The American Academy of Pediatrics released new COVID-19 recommendations stating every child over the age of two should mask up whether being vaccinated or not. However, the district says Governor Greg Abbott's executive order that lifted the mandatory mask mandate has their hands tied. While we will highly encourage the use of face masks, uh, we, we cannot mandate those. Special education teacher Alexandra Marquez says despite the fact that children haven't been the main target of the pandemic so far, the anxiety is still there. I'm worried about the entire child, not just their physical health. I'm worried about their mental health as well, as well as their families at home. Now, the district is highly recommending everyone that's of age to get vaccinated. They say that they'll continue to work with local providers to do pop up clinics so that anyone who wants to get a vaccine can do so easily and conveniently. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Jaffney. And we have a list of vaccination clinics on our website right now at ksat.com. The Delta variant has been detected here in San Antonio and some cases among patients who have been hospitalized. Today at 6 o'clock, we spoke with Dr. Diego Maselli, the medical director of respiratory therapy at University Hospital. He told us that he has seen patients regret not getting the vaccine. Around 95% of more of the patients that we see inside the hospital are unvaccinated patients. Uh, and yes, when you discuss these, uh, you know, the things in their care with the patients, they do express that they wish they were uh, vaccinated or they wish they had, uh, you know, been vaccinated previously. Dr. Maselli reiterated that those who have been vaccinated and still get COVID-19 have milder symptoms and usually stay out of the hospital. A shooting at a fast food restaurant leaves one woman injured. The suspect now arrested for a second time. Uvalde police officers arresting Orlando Gorella yesterday. The Uvalde County Sheriff's Office confirms he was originally arrested Saturday for a shooting at a Sonic in Uvalde. A 29 year old woman was shot in the abdomen and taken to University Hospital for treatment. A motive in the case still unclear. Investigators say Gorilla was able to bond out of jail through their investigation, though police learned he's a registered sex offender. He was taken into custody for violating his conditions. A deadly crash under investigation. One man in his 20s killed after veering straight into traffic. It happened on Roosevelt Avenue just south of Southeast Military Drive. Witnesses say the man was in a silver car weaving in and out of lanes before hitting a red truck head on. The driver of that truck not hurt, but a passenger was taken to the hospital. The numbers are rising when it comes to homicides in San Antonio. This time last year, there had been 80 homicide cases. Compare that to this time this year, 87 cases so far. 
And just today, a 15 year old boy was killed in his home when a stray bullet went through a bedroom wall, hitting him in the head. 15 year old Tristan Jaden Rosas was playing video games when he was killed this morning. Police believe a shootout in the parking lot outside the apartments is to blame. The boy's uncle left distraught along with the rest of the family. Dudes were fighting in the back. They're shooting at each other and they brought it up here to the front. The complex sits on the city's west side on Waters Edge Drive. A man in his 40s who police say was connected to that shootout was also hit but survived. Investigators found a parked car with a gun inside, but it's still unclear if that's connected to this case. One man found dead with a gunshot wound to his head nearly two months later. Investigators back on that crime scene. A dive team with the Texas Department of Public Safety searching a pond near Saints Ark Drive and Saints Haven for any new evidence in this case. Police first found Jonathan Lopez Urbano's body on May 25th along a roadway near the lake. Officers were originally called to the Hidden Lake Mobile Home Park. Still no arrests in this case. A NASA image analyst bringing his decades of experience to the Otis McCain trial. McCain accused of killing San Antonio Police Detective Benjamin Marconi in 2016. In day seven of the trial, David Bretz used his 25 years of experience with NASA to help shed some light on the case. He was able to sharpen and enlarge several stills, but not without limits. One image showed an apparent dark spot on the suspect's hand as that suspect held a gun behind Detective Marconi's head. But Bretz could not say if the spot on the photo was a tattoo or if it even matched the design on Otis McCain's hand. Bretz testified video compression was to blame. The compression meant to save on data space on a hard drive. It's very standard practice to compress videos, especially ones that are videotaping for many hours, looking at usually nothing for many hours until something interesting happens. Um, and so you don't want to spend all that effort saving a lot of video information that's unnecessary. The past witnesses have placed McCain at the scene of the crime. In this case, McCain could face the death penalty if convicted. We'll continue to live stream this trial tomorrow when court resumes at 9 a.m. Earlier this evening, a little outflow boundary pushed north to south and that flared up a pretty heavy downpour. A nice little gully washer here downtown and good soaking rainfall for some folks. That was earlier in the evening hours, especially around 9 p.m. You look at the path of the rain here. These are the estimated rainfall totals and you get within 410 in parts of downtown, Alamo Heights, Monta Vista area, even just west of 281 and near Highway 90 up to about half an inch estimated by Doppler radar. These are those rogue pop up showers that we see in this kind of weather pattern. And right now we've got one downpour, a little bit of lightning and thunder clipping Fisher. This is moving to the southwest, about to move into rural portions of Kendall County and still just skimming right along the Kamal County line right there. We're going to talk more about our rain and storm chances and how they're going to be enhanced a little bit coming down the pike straight ahead. Five, four, Command engine start. Two, one. It is a full throttle trip towards a new type of space travel. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos among a small crew taking off in Texas headed to outer space. Blue Origin launched its new Shepard spacecraft from a site in Van Horn, traveling more than 60 miles above the Earth's surface. Local engineer Kevin Supak with the Southwest Research Institute helped test a device designed to prevent potentially dangerous vapor bubbles from being transferred to the rocket engine itself. We've done two flights with them so far. We have a, a, a third one coming up here shortly. The students at Lasoya Middle School joined the millions of people around the world launching or watching today's launch, including 12 year old Natalia Garza who witnessed 82 year old Wally Funk become the oldest person to fly to space 60 years after she was first denied that opportunity. Being of that she couldn't go like a long time ago before up to the moon and now she can and she accomplished her dream. It was really nice. Today's trip adding to the excitement for space travel. The entire crew able to land back on Earth safely minutes after taking off. 
Many students are just weeks away from starting the new school year, but a local nonprofit is looking to help families with school supplies and clothing needs. The Vertical Worship Ministries is hosting a back to school drive on Saturday, August 7th. That will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Vertical Church. That's located on the corner of Thousand Oaks Drive and Volverde Road. There will be food, family fun activities and a COVID-19 vaccination clinic. Now you must pre-register for the event. Vertical Church is also looking for volunteers and donations for everything you need to know. Just head to KSAT.com. Still ahead here on the night feed, it's not just the weather that's heating up. So are home prices what first time home buyers can expect? And when one realtor believes the market will cool down coming up. At KSAT in Oxnard, California for the Dallas Cowboys training camp. Greg Simmons with a live report with what fans can expect to see. And several theft suspects dodging traffic, but they couldn't dodge police. Witnesses sharing their account next on the Night Beat. A brazen theft leads to a foot chase. The target of that theft, catalytic converters and the precious metals they hold inside. Police say a pair of suspects caught in broad daylight at the forum along I-35 in Selma. Take a look at video of the aftermath here. AJ Vasquez posted this video on Facebook after the suspects bailed out of a black SUV and ran across the main lanes of traffic along I-35. Look at them way over there. They crossed it. Yeah, they crossed it. There's already a couple of their waiting though. And those suspects unable to escape police, investigators also say they located several stolen catalytic converters. Home prices are hot this summer. The average home price in San Antonio 19% higher than it was last year. Homes also selling at historic speeds as well. The 19th Patty Santos talks to a family excited about having sold their home in two days, but now worried about having to buy a new one. It was that fast. Boom. The Caspers sold their house within days of putting it on the market and made a profit. Totally a seller's market. Like we're so excited on this end. And um, but now we um, have sold this house and now we have to go buy a house. And they're bracing for that stressful process. According to the June report by the San Antonio Board of Realtors, the average home price in San Antonio was 19 percent higher than last summer at more than three hundred and forty five thousand dollars. Homes are also selling twice as fast as last year. So we are in a historic time in San Antonio. Realtor Michelle Campbell says the buyer's market is competitive. She's getting anywhere from 20 to 30 offers on a home. It's especially difficult for new buyers. Right now as a first time home buyer, you've got to have every single dollar to give to the seller and then some. And that's that's what's happening is a lot of those first time home buyers that, uh, that don't have, you know, a bunch of money saved are not being able to purchase right now. But even with money to spend, buyers are not easily fooled. If your home hasn't sold quickly, it might be overpriced. Consumers are not dumb. They know what they should be paying. The Caspers offer this insight. Listen to your agent and be ready for a quick sell. <laughs> They're taking that knowledge and trusting the process as they begin their house hunt in a new city. Be patient and be aggressive <laughs> and know your market. Realtor Michelle Campbell says the inventory of homes is slightly higher. It's hard to predict when the bubble will end, but she thinks things might slow down by the holidays. Steve, Myra. All right, taking a look outside with live cam, another round of some heavy rain in parts of San Antonio, but as it goes around here, some people didn't see any of that. Action. Actually, I called a friend in Live Oak tonight and they didn't get any rain, but downtown <laughs> it came down in sheets. It did came down pretty hard with a little bit of lightning and thunder, so a different part of town than uh, what got hit yesterday, where it was generally the north side and then the far east side, and we have more activity out there right now. Just these rogue isolated heavy rain producers, and they're pretty quick right now. Just moving through Fisher, the west side of Canyon Lake getting clipped by this downpour. A little bit of lightning and thunder with it. It's along 281, moving into Spring Branch and about to brush against parts of Smithson Valley area near the high school and middle school there. What's helping to cause some of this is this outflow boundary that's rushing southward. And that outflow boundary is going to make it to Hollywood Park at about 1225 AM. 
UTSA at about 12.30 a.m., Churchill High School area at about 1237. The reason I point out the outflow boundary is because that's when you'll have a quick little puff of wind. You'll notice, notice the breeze pick up outside and then it can also kickstart another quick downpour or two as it continues to move southward. So it's that boundary here that uh, has a history of triggering a few showers, especially now just west of Canyon Lake. And we have a little bit of activity moving toward Brackettville. And not a whole lot here, but in Kinney County, we've got this activity here in the eastern portion of Kinney County. It's pushing an outflow boundary westward toward Del Rio. That's going to make it to you within about an hour or two and give you a quick little puff of wind and a cool breeze and possibly kickstart some new thunderstorms. So a lot of it's just tracking these boundaries, just like what we had earlier today downtown. Outflow boundary moved southward and flared up that storm. Tomorrow's going to be similar. Here's one of the driving forces though in our atmosphere that's going to boost our rain chances a bit as we get into Thursday. It's this upper level disturbance, this counterclockwise swirl here. It's no coincidence that you saw a lot of activity around it. Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama today. This is going to slowly drift westward and tomorrow we'll have more of what we had today, not necessarily in the same locations, but some of those rogue pop up showers and we have to watch those outflow boundaries and see where they kick up more activity, but only about 30% coverage. So not all of us getting hit. We get into Thursday that low heads just to the west of us. So that upper level support is a bit better. And even in the morning for the morning commute on Thursday, a few hit or miss downpours, especially into the afternoon. We're expecting just more numerous showers and storms to pop up, but nothing really severe anticipated, but better odds of getting hit as we go into Thursday afternoon, but still not everybody getting it. Only about 40% of us out there. And then you see more of a typical July pattern Big old goose egg for rain chances Friday through the weekend. 90 was our high today after a morning low of 73. Another day below average. Right now we're at 75 degrees. Pretty typical outside currently. Mid 70s for the most part. Still hanging on to 80 at Stinson and Pleasanton. 81 Catula. Meanwhile, 74 in Kerrville. Tomorrow we'll start the day at 72. Make it to near 90 with that 20 to 30% chance, especially into the afternoon. More specifically, Canyon Lake 90 degrees, Carrizo Springs 93 and Pleasanton 92. Friday into the weekend, that looks more familiar for July, huh? <laughs> Sunny, mid 90s, maybe upper 90s in spots. All right, thanks Adam. All right, so you know it's about midnight here, mm -hmm. but Greg Simmons, you know, it's not even late for him. It's not even what? It's not even. A, it's not even eleven o'clock out even there close. yet. <laughs> Greg hanging out at the marina. Everything's great. Waiting for the Cowboys. They're there. Yes, because basically camp is closed for the night to get ready for tomorrow. So we find ourselves at the Channel View Marina tonight. When we come back here, we'll get you ready for the start of the Dallas Cowboys training camp. Their departure out of Dallas, their arrival here in Oxnard. And also we come back, the NBA Finals Game 6, we have a new champ. Obviously, it was a weird year for everyone in the country not, or everyone in the world, not just uh, us as a football team. So um, that's in the rearview mirror. We're excited to get going this season. The Dallas Cowboys are back in their summer home, Oxnard, California, ready to put last year behind them in war ways and one. It's time to go camping with KSAT. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our live coverage of the Dallas Cowboys training camp day one here in Oxnard, California. Like he said, it is good to be back, but there are very strict safety protocols in the process. That's one reason why we're coming to you live from the marina tonight. Now, some encouraging news today as the players boarded their charter flight to LAX here from LAX. Ezekiel Elliott looking for a bounce back season after his worst of his career. It's the first time we will hear from Zeke this offseason. Amari Cooper, by the way, also amidst all of the offseason work. Workouts following ankle surgery reports on time. Head coach Mike McCarthy beginning his second season, but his first ever in Oxnard. The Cowboys arriving this afternoon to their secure team headquarters. No one but players, coaches, and staff are allowed on the hotel property. Every car we saw driving in was checked by security and has set up a tight perimeter. The only place for the media and fans is the two practice fields adjacent to the property that have already been lined for their first practice on Thursday. For veterans such as offensive lineman Zach Martin, who struggled with injuries last season, it's good to be home. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, it's great to be back. It's great to be in the weather. Uh, it just feels like training camp when you come out here. So um, it's a great opportunity for us to connect as a team, kind of be isolated in this one little area and, and get to work and kind of build our foundation for the season. The Cowboys, by the way, are also ready for their fans to return, setting up midway through the other side of the practice fields. That includes a little bit of everything, including, of course, merchandise. Here's a look at some key camp dates right now. Tomorrow, the state of the dress for the Dallas Cowboys. Stephen Jones, Jerry Jones, Mike McCarthy join that. Thursday, first practice. Saturday, opening ceremony. Sunday, Jerry Jones on instant replay. The Dallas Cowboys will be under a lot of pressure to prepare for their first preseason game, which will be the Hall of Fame game against Pittsburgh and Canton on August the 5th. The first regular season game will actually be the first of the season for the NFL on September the 9th. But today, Tom Brady and his new teammates from Tampa Bay, of course, celebrating their Super Bowl championship at the White House with President Joe Biden and the seven time Super Bowl champion couldn't resist poking a little fun at the outcome of the election. But we found our rhythm. We got on a roll. Not a lot of people, uh, you know, think that we could have won. And um, in fact, I think about 40 percent of the people still don't think we won. I understand that. You understand that, Mr. President? I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the NBA Finals Game 6 and a new NBA champion next. The Milwaukee Bucks had a chance to close out the Phoenix Suns in Game 6 tonight of the NBA Finals, and they did. But it's not until after a very slow start for both teams. Bucks up by 13 after one with Giannis Antetokounmpo scoring back-to-back -back baskets. He had 10 in the first. Second quarter, different story. The Suns' Cameron Payne had 10 points coming off the bench, including back-to-back -back threes. Chris Paul added to that. He had 13 at the break, and the Suns led 47-42 at the half. Now we take you to the third quarter, and the Bucks take the lead back. Brook Lopez gets the big-time dunk. Milwaukee goes up by six, but the Suns tied at 77 off of free throws. We're headed to the fourth, all tied up. Time to feed the Greek freak. Check out the big-time block on Devin Booker. He had five. Then the putback off of Middleton's miss. He had 14 rebounds, and then down low between the defenders for the big-time slam. He could not be stopped tonight. Finishes 50 points, 16 to 25 shooting, including 7 to 19 from the free throw line. The Milwaukee Bucks are your new NBA champs. You can see former Spurs assistant Mike Budenholzer celebrating right there. And take a look outside. 65,000 fans cheering their hearts out in Amazing crowd in Milwaukee tonight. Eight and a half years ago, before I came to the league, I didn't know where my next move would come from. You know, my mom was selling stuff in the street. You, like, and now I'm here sitting at the top of the top. You know, and, I, and, and I'm extremely blessed. Congratulations to him. And in case you missed some of our digital coverage today at Cowboys Camp, how about the early plane ride with a 3.30 a.m. wake-up call for photographer Billy Caldera and producer Mike Klein. Drive up the Pacific Coast Highway and then Billy posing at our favorite remote location to kick off camp. And then what Billy was able to catch after our first live broadcast, Hollywood at work. How about that down the Pacific Coast Highway? We have more to come tomorrow, and we cannot wait to share it with you from the Dallas Cowboys training camp in Oxnard, Cal. California back to you. Thank you, Greg. Get Ooh, some sleep. Get some sleep. 3.30. Yeah. Ouch. We'll, <laughs> we'll be right see back. you tomorrow. All right, take a look at this. A massive fish that is hard to miss. It Ooh. washed up on the shores of Oregon last week. It's known as a moonfish. It weighs in at 100 pounds. According to Seaside Aquarium General Manager Keith Chandler, it is rare to see moonfish on the Oregon coast. Chandler says the fish had probably been on the beach for less than an hour before the aquarium found out about it. The goal is to now study such a rare find. Wow. It does not look real. No, it doesn't. It looks fake. Uh, the looks. ocean is so amazing. Isn't isn't it? it really is. Uh, it just makes me want to go fishing. Anything makes you exactly. want to go for sure. True, it's very true. Days that end in Y make you want pretty to much it. near 90 tomorrow again around town. 88 for the high in Bernie, Lackland 89, Lavernian 90. So for the night beat, GMSA starts in about four and a half hours. Get some sleep. Good